Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the operating lease and we'll work a comprehensive example. But before we start the example, I'm going to do a brief overview about what is an operating lease before we dive into the journal entries and the computation because it's very important to understand what is an operating lease, what are we dealing with, and I'm going to first show you the journal entries without any figures, then I'm going to use the figures to plug in the journal entries. So what is an operating lease? An operating lease is not a finance lease. Well, what's a, what's an operating lease? It's, it's a lease that failed the five criterias because if it had not failed the five criterias, it would have been a finance lease. What are those five criterias? One, no ownership transfer at the end of the lease. The lessee don't have ownership of the asset. Two, no bargain purchase option. The lessee don't have an incentive or a bargain purchase option to buy the asset. The present value of the payment is less than 90% of the fair value of the asset. It failed the present value test. The lease term is less than 75% of the asset life and the asset is of no specialized assets. It, does, it means it can be uh, leased again by the lessor to another party. So because it failed all of those, we have an operating lease. Otherwise, what we will do, we'll have a finance lease. In the next session, we would look at a comprehensive example for a finance lease. So on the balance sheet, whether we have an operating lease or a finance lease, we record an asset called the right of use asset and we record the liability called the lease liability. This is the same for both an operating lease and a finance lease. So these items represent the lessee's right to use the leased asset because we have an asset on the books and the obligation to make the lease payment. So we have an asset, something under our control, right of use, we have the right to use it, and we have a liability called a lease liability. To compute the initial value of this entry, which is the asset and the liability, the present value of the future lease payment is determined. And this is what we looked at in the prior session. What do we use in those computation? And which interest rate do we use to compute the discount rate that reflect the interest rate that's implicit in the lease if known. So that's the first thing we look at. If we don't know the interest rate implicit in the rate, then we will use our incremental borrowing rate. And this should all be a review from the prior sessions. Now we're going to look at subsequent to the initial recording. Subsequent. Subsequent means what? We start here. Debit and asset, credit, a liability. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. So we start by debiting an asset and crediting a liability. And over the life of the lease, both the asset and the liabilities, assets and the liabilities are gradually reduced. Simply put, we have an asset. And what do we do with assets? Generally speaking, when we have assets, property, plant, and equipment, what do we do with them or intangible? we depreciate them, we amortize them, and that's what's gonna to happen to the asset. And what do we do with liabilities? Well, the liabilities go down over time. So the lease liability decrease using effective interest rate method, which means interest expense is calculated on the outstanding liability, and the lease payment are applied against the interest expense, and the principal reduction of the liability. Just like the asset goes down, the liability goes down. The asset goes down through amortization or depreciation. The liability goes down as we make payment. And the entry will be, this is also a balance sheet entry, will be we reduce the liability and we reduce the amortization. We reduce the liability assuming we're making payment and the amortization as time goes by, we reduce it. That's on the balance sheet. On the income statement, what we will do is we're going to have one expense called lease expense. Now this expense will have the interest component plus the amortization. And this is going to be different when we jump to the finance lease. Under the finance lease, we're going to split the interest 
and the amortization into two separate accounts. So on the income statement, the total lease expense is recognized evenly over the lease term. Following the straight line, simply put, we just figure out what's the payment and that's gonna be the lease expense. And this approach spreads the total cost of the leasing, including the interest evenly, evenly, although actual interest, the actual interest from period to period obviously will go down as the liability goes down, but the lease expense, it's going to be the same, the same expense, and that expense include the interest expense. So the interest expense, it's not going to show separately. It's going to be kind of basically blended with the lease expense, and it's going to be the same, although in reality, it's not, because interest expense varies. Interest expense is a factor of the liability. So as the liability goes down, interest expense goes down. Don't worry, we're going to look at numbers. So unlike a financing lease where the interest expense and the amortization are reported separately, in an operating lease, we report them together. So the lease expense will include both interest and the amortization. And this approach simplifies the income statement presentation but does not separate or highlight the interest cost as part of the lease expense. Now, why don't we do that? Well, the reason is because the operating is considered a rent. And because it's considered a rent, interest should not be a factor. Versus a finance lease, under a finance lease, it's considered a loan. Well, if we have a loan, then show me the interest related to that loan. So what we're trying to do in a operating expense is ignore the interest component because it's not a loan. It's a rent expense. Let's take a look at an example to illustrate this concept. On January 1st, year X2, Jackson Enterprises, the lessee, enters into a four-year operating lease. They told us it's an operating lease, and we don't have to worry about this. For office equipment from Quantum Leasing, the lessor. The lessee includes an annual payment of 24000 per year, with the first payment due December 31st, 20X2. Now, be careful. It means the payment is due one year from the date, which is January 1st. The interest rate implicit in the lease is known as 6%. The present value of an ordinary annuity is 3.465106, rounding with a 6%. So N equal to how many periods? N equal to 4, I equal to 6%. We'll go to the present value annuity factor and we'll find this factor. Now, let's journalize the entry. What do we need to do first? First, we need to record the asset on the books, the asset and the liability. What do we do? We are going to take the present value factor to 24,000 times the present value factor 3.465 and that's going to give us an asset that's worth 83,163. We're going to debit the asset and credit the liability, thus putting the asset and the liability on the books. What is the asset? The asset is for our right to use this property. We can use it. It's under our control. It's an asset. The liability is the obligation that we have to make payments. The next thing the companies will do is prepare an amortization schedule. Well, what would it look like? We're starting with a lease liability of 83,163 and an asset of 86,163. Then we make the first payment, 24,000. Now, this payment, this payment is for both interest and principal. So first we have to figure out the interest amount. Although we have to figure out the interest amount, we don't record it. We kind of blend it with the lease expense. We're going to take the liability times 6%. When we take the liability times 6%, it's going to give us the interest component. The interest component is 4,990. Well, if, the, of, if of the 24,000, we are going to consider 4,990 as interest, what do we consider the remainder? Well, we have to consider the remainder as a principal. And what's the remainder of the 24,000? 19,010 dollars and this is going to do what reduce the liability by 19,010 dollars well this amount will also reduce the asset by 19,010 dollars then period x3 we're going to take the new liability which is the end of x2 multiplied by 6% and come up with interest expense of 3,849. We're going to make a payment of 24. We're going to say 3,849 is interest. The remainder is principal. Now, again, we're not going to show the interest. You're going to see that. We're not going to show the interest, 
but we need to know how much of it is interest so we know how much of it is a reduction in the principal. Then this amount would reduce the principal and would reduce the carrying value of the asset. So let's take a look at the first journal entry when we make the payment. But before we do that, let's go over the schedule one more time. The lease expense is always the same, the payment, 24,000. Interest expense is taken what? How do we compute interest expense? Taken the prior balance times 6%. The prior balance times 6%. The prior ending balance times 6%. The principal is the difference between what you paid in cash and the interest expense must be the principal, the remainder. And the lease liability will go down after reducing it by the principal payment. And obviously the carrying value represents the initial value of the right of use asset adjusted for cumulative amortization decrease annually until it reaches zero by the through the lease liability amount reduction. So the first payment we will make at the end of the year, we're going to make a payment of 24,000. We're going to debit lease expense, 24,000 credit cash. So this is for the cash payment. And this lease expense include the interest component, include the interest component. And it include also the, let's show it the proper one. It include the interest component and it include the amortization expense. So the 24,000 lease expense is blending in there the interest expense and the amortization amount. Then we are going to debit lease liability 19,011. Now you're saying it should be 10, it's rounding. We're gonna reduce the liability by 19,011 and credit accumulated uh, amortization by 19,011. And what's going to happen? This 19,011 would reduce our liability and it would reduce our right of use asset. This is for period X, X3. Uh, X2. Period X3, period X3, the cash payment will always be the same. It's 24,000. Now the interest component is 3,849. 3, 3,849, it means the principal amount is the remainder, which is 20,151. Again, that's going to reduce the lease liability and increase the accumulated amortization, which reduces the carrying value of the asset. So notice lease liability went down, the carrying value of the asset went down. Year four, cash payment is the same. Notice interest expense is going down. It makes sense because the lease liability amount is going down and interest is a factor of the liability. Then lease liability goes down by 21,359. Again, 360 rounding will bring down the liability. We bring down the asset. Year five, last payment, we pay 24,000. Of this amount, we're gonna consider in quote 1,358 interest, although we don't we notice we, we did not show interest expense anywhere on these slides because we don't for an operating expense, we blend it with lease expense just like well just like we blend amortization expense. Then the remainder is 22,642, and it would reduce the liability and the asset down to zero. Now this is an operating lease. What I'm gonna do in the next session, I'm gonna take the same lease and work a finance lease journal entries. So this way you can see the difference. But what should you do? You should go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional resources, look at additional resources, multiple choice lectures that's gonna help you whether you're studying for your CPA exam, accounting courses, or some other professional certification. Invest in yourself, good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.